All right, uh, morning guys. We are going to continue our um, work on Barn Burning by William Faulkner. So uh, we read it the last couple of days. You guys have had some time to prepare for uh, some questions for class discussion. So we'll be doing the class discussion today. Um, don't forget that uh, this is for speaking and listening standards. So I will be giving you participation on whether you answer a question or not, or whether you are able to uh, answer a question. And then I'll be collecting your question sheets at the end to make sure that you had prepared for the discussion. Um, so if you'll get your books out so that you have the uh, text in front of you, um, it is page 480 to 491 in the uh, green lip books. So there should be one under everybody's desk. Uh, and then go ahead and get your notes out as well. And I'll give you guys a minute to find it. And I'll find it because I'm on the wrong page. All right. Uh, so the five topics that we've talked about so far were uh, choices, family, justice, uh, society, and class, and courage. Um, so does anybody... Um, have a preference on what we start with, or who wants to start out? Otherwise, I'm just picking. All right, picking it is. What, what do you have? Uh, courage. Okay, so we'll start out with courage. Uh, so, courage questions. All right. Um, so, the first question that we had, uh, because this whole thing revolves around um, burning barns and Abner burning barns. So, uh, do you think there's anything brave about burning barns? Well, my well the way I see bravery is you risk yourself for the greater good. Okay. There is no greater good in going around and burning barns. It's basically being a pyromaniac, which is what Abner was. Okay. So I don't think that there's any bravery in burning barns. No. You don't? Does anybody think that there is? No? No. Okay, so I kind of thought it was brave because he's going um, against the societal norm, right? Like, he knows that that's not okay, yet he's still continuing to do it. Um, so I think that's bravery in itself, that you're breaking the rules, knowing that you're breaking the rules. Yeah, the risk of being Maybe. a criminal. Yeah, the risk of being a criminal and having that label on you. Um, good. Okay. Um, what about, what do we think of Sardi in terms of bravery? Uh, do we think that he's brave? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay, why? You're not the home. He ran away from home would be one, yes. What else? He snitched out his father. Okay, yeah, he snitched out his father, um, which took a lot of bravery because yeah. what has his father been preaching the whole time? Family is everything. Family is everything, right? So Stay turning together. against your family, I think it was brave for him to stand up. Um, and we remember how old Sardi is, right? He's like 10. Yeah, he's 10. So think about your 10-year-old self and whether you would be able to, yeah, go against your father and your whole family. Um knowing that you're going to be basically ostracized from the family. So do you think it was brave for him to leave home? Yeah. 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 Knowing that his, he thought that his father would come after him, but he did it anyway. Okay, so he, yeah, he thought he, his father would come after him, but he did it anyway. So, um, yeah, again, for a 10-year-old to run away, especially in this time period, um, I think I think that's, that's pretty brave because he doesn't know where he's going to go. He doesn't know what he's going to do. Um, but then again, I think it's hard for any 10-year-old to run away from home. But yes, especially um, now. So um, do you think it would have been more or less brave for him to stay and try and work things out? I think less it would have been more brave since his, fam since his mother and everything are going through it all. Mm -hmm. And he could have been their support system too. Okay, so maybe it would have been more of a burden. Yeah. Okay, so do you think that that's brave though? I think it's the right thing to do, but it's not as right. Okay. So do you think that uh, it's the right thing to do for him to stay and help his mother, but then that means that he's actually following his father's commands because he's family is first. and Yeah, but he could have waited until he was older and more stable. Okay. And then got his mother. And Gotten his and mother and sister. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that. That's good. Um. And then last but not least on this one, uh, can someone be fearless but not courageous? Yes. Okay, explain. Well, um, Abner, uh, Sardi's father, I think that he is a good example of someone that can be fearless but not courageous. Okay. Because he is going against the societal norms. That's pretty fearless. Like, um, if you're going around doing this, the, he's pretty comfortable with himself. And, uh, I don't see... Like, same thing with bravery. I don't see much courage in what he does. 
Yeah, okay. Okay. So, do you think that it takes courage, um, if we fast forward to nowadays, do you think it takes courage to um, stand up against what you think is wrong in society? Yeah, it takes courage to do that. So, you're saying but, that it takes okay. courage to do okay. that okay. now, but not then? I mean, but in the sense of that he's burning barns, like, I, I can imagine, like, going against what you think is wrong, like, in the sense of harmless protest, maybe, or okay. anything that doesn't include vandalism or destruction of property. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, so the destruction of property part, the part that he's running around at night, yeah. makes it m not courageous. Because if he was so. being courageous, he would be... In the open or standing up to their, doing it to their face, maybe. Yeah. And then not lying about it. That's the other thing, right? Lying. The lying. Um, can you be cor courageous but afraid? Definitely. Think so? Yeah. Yeah? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes, good example. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, do any characters in this uh, story fit these descriptions? And we just talked about how Abner does. Um, and then courageous but afraid. Um, so, do we have... Any other characters that we see that might fit these descriptions? Sardi's mother, perhaps. Okay, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, Sardi's mother is a good one, and why does she fit? Well, she would be courageous but afraid, wouldn't she? Because Abner um, and the things that he does, threatening the full livelihood of the family. Good. Yeah, uh, I think so, too. Um, so... I just want to throw this out here, too. Um, would Abner, okay, the father, would he see uh, Sardi's action in the final sections of the story when he goes and, you know, um, would he see that as brave? I, if it was someone else and not yeah. his own son. If Sardi wasn't his own son and was going against family, would he see that as brave if, if he had known somebody else to do that? I, I can see this going either way. You don't think so? No, I do. Okay. It's pretty stubborn. I, I, Okay, so you think he seems stubborn? You do think he was a? Me? Who said I do? I do. Why? Because, like, you're talking about the father looking at, like, a son. Yeah, like, if it was like, someone else, not his own son. Because he'll be like, oh, it's brave to do that, like, to your own family. Like, he'll be, like, he'll look and think. Just because it's not his family. Yeah. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, you're brave. But not brave. Okay. He means brave as in, like, you're really good. Not, not brave. Yeah. Like, not brave as in. Oh, he's running away from family. So we'll see that as, as a bad thing. Like, you okay. know, like when you like act out from your parents, and you're like, oh, you're brave. Yeah. Yeah, it's one okay. of those. I don't okay. Think, I don't, I don't do be a brave thing. thing. I do you don't? Because I think he would be like, there's no control in their household or anything. Okay, so you would see it as like yeah. a reflection on the parents. Yeah. Okay. I think he'd see That's it. That's how he would see it. Okay. I think uh, his whole <laughs> philosophy of family is everything. Okay. Would kind of dictate that. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> last but not least, uh, Abner's a coward. We've already, Travis kind of hit on this before, yeah. um, because he terrorizes innocent people, right? <clears throat> Do we think that these people did anything to deserve um, what they've gotten in return as far as their barn being burned down and all their product and, you know, the, the manure on the rug and destroying the rug? Um, do we think that that these people have done anything to deserve that, or do we think that it's just Abner acting out? I think it's just him acting out. I think it's just him acting out? Everybody kind of agree there? Okay. Um, but then we said he's also brave because he chooses to live outside of society that he thinks is corrupt. So um, do you agree or disagree with this, that he's both a coward and brave? Can you be both a coward and brave? Yeah. We kind of talked about this so. a little bit about the fearless or courageous or courageous but afraid, but... But we've chosen a different word here, coward, yeah. right? I see, like, um, I think you can be a coward and brave at the same time. Because uh, what you're doing and the reason behind why you're doing it, it, it's a big thing. Like, you can do things that are brave, such as what he does, kind of. I, I can kind of see it now. But um, it's, like, the reasoning behind what he does. That's yeah, like so your coward. motivation, like, what causes it driving you to do these things. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to the next one. Um, we're going to talk about uh, family a little bit, since we've already touched on it. Um, and so, family. Um, we talked about Sardi and, um, and then his mother, but um, how do you think that Sardi's decision would, uh, to leave home would impact his mom 
or his sisters or his aunt, like the women in the household. I thought it could make the father mad. Okay. So I feel like he would just take it out on everyone else around him because they're saying no. Okay. So, okay, that's good. Yeah, I think so. Sorry and his mother had like this mutual like um, what is it called? Like like a little string of like sanity between each other, like keeping each other like calm in a sort of Okay, so they were kind of each other's support? Yeah, okay. so with one leaving the other would probably crumble the um, crushing weight of the situations that Abner always would come in. Okay, the crushing weight of Abner, right? Yes. Good. Alright. Um Okay, so do you think that in terms of his family, do you think that he was right in leaving home? If we know that it's going to devastate his mom and his sisters and maybe cause, you know, some sort of abuse or retaliation against them, do you think that that, that was a smart decision on Sardi's part? No, I, don't, I don't think that if he and mom wanted to get out, she'd be able to get out without him, without him being older to help her. Because I don't think Abner would let him leave. Okay, so you think that Abner has complete control there? So um, I kind of thought the same type of thing um, there where um, I was just um, thinking about how like he is not at, at that maturity level to think things all the way through. So I don't think that he was thinking necessarily of how it would affect everyone else if he left. So it's interesting for us to, you know, go back to that and, and think of how it does affect them because, you know, we know that. He's not thinking that way. He's thinking, I'm over this cycle, and I want to get out of it, and not the outlying retaliation effects that that would have. Um, good. Okay. Um, what about, do you think Abner is right that the most important thing in life is to stick to your own blood? Nope. No? Okay. Yes? So, why no? Because what's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. Okay. Or not, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, so question here. What would you do if you were in this situation? I would tell him. I would testify against him. Would you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? I think I'd do the same. You would? Yes. Yeah, because if you know it's wrong, why would you? Yeah, do you protect family at all costs, <laughs> even if you know it's wrong and it's morally corrupt? Or, see, and Nick says yes, so why yes? Because family's like, but is family always blood? So do people feel like just because you're blood related to someone, that means that you should at all costs protect them? So you just contradicted yourself. So what do you think? What, what yeah, so like, you know, if Lexi and I were really close, She's not, we're not blood related, but I could still consider her family, right? And so then I could see that. But what if, um, you know, I hate my sister and she does a bunch of crazy stuff? Or what if I hate my sister because she's abusive to me or whatever? Am I going to defend her just because she's my sister? Probably not. Um, good. Uh, so, yeah, would you have done the same if you were in Sardi's shoes? We had a whole lot of people say that. Um, and then, last but not least on this one, um, how would you describe their home life? Like, start their, their home life. <coughs> good, bad? Hectic. Hectic, okay. That's a good word for it. Emotionally abusive. Emotionally abusive, okay. Anyone have anything else? So, how, how do you think that that's going to change without starting in the household? I think it's going to be worse. You think it's going to go worse? Yeah. Okay. Because, well, well, um, Sardi seemed to be helping Abner a lot, and without him there, I think that everything's just going to go back onto the uh, woman of the household. Okay, so you think, all, like we said before, all the retaliation yeah. and wrath is going to fall on them since they don't have that scapegoat of Sardi. Okay. I think it's going to be more of like a, um, like when 
matter. When I think of loss, I always have to refer to like the five stages of grief. Like, okay. Like, I'm always denial. Yeah. Yeah, I can just see like with the loss of a child, I can always see it being like the blame game for me like, around my house. So okay. I always try to like every day to myself or something. Okay, and do you think that maybe, um, do we think that if it did get to that point where there was no scapegoat in Sardi, do we think that the mom might be strong enough to step up and kind of stand up to Abner? I think eventually. Mm -hmm. Eventually? Yeah. Okay. You can only take so much before you like, it's done. Snap. Okay, yeah, you can only take so much before you snap. Fair enough. I think enough. that he ran away, she'll get his fire. Do what? I think that he ran away, she'll get his fire. She, okay, so she might think that because he made it out that she'll figure out a way to get out herself. Okay, yeah, so like inspiration. That would be good. Or if Sardi was the reason she was keeping it all under control and not saying anything just for his sake to Could protect be. him. Because he's young? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so she's, he's gone. She's going to stand up for herself. She have yeah, have you... Yeah, um, so it makes me think of um, when parents stay together for the sake of the children. Um, and then as soon as the children are out of the house, they're like, all right, we're out. Right? Um, my aunt and uncle did that. So, you know, same sort of thing where maybe now that he's gone, but his sisters are still there. So what do you think? Do you think that she'll stick around for the sisters, or do you think she'll try and take them with her? Like, why would Sardi have been the reason that she kept it together and not the other kids? I believe that she didn't want the dad influencing Right, you kind of follow in their footsteps. Like the older brother. I was going to say. So this brings us right back to the older brother, right? Um, so do you think that Sardi's brother is important to the story? Uh-huh. Yeah? Why? Because he could be like a, an eye to Sardi, like, don't, for Sardi to not be like that. Like, this is this is what happened if you do this, this, and that, if you defend that, if you do this, that, and that, and that. Okay, so it's one of those things where it's like, this is what you'll end up if you don't run away. So then it says, if Sardi doesn't run away from his family, would he have turned out like his brother? Why or why not? So, yeah, so if he had stayed, he would have followed in his father and brother's footsteps. But since he ran away, he was able to get out of that cycle. Of them. Good. Um, and then last but not least, what impression do you have of Sardi's sisters? How do you think he feels about them? think he likes them, doesn't like them, feels sorry for them. I think he tries to do everything so they don't have to. Okay, so he tries to take all the burden on himself. Good. Um, okay, so we've covered family and courage. So uh, let's move to um, justice. Okay. So justice. Um, we'll start out with uh, the first justice of the peace violates the principles of law by ordering Abner to leave town even though he finds him not guilty, okay? So remember we had talked about um, if he had been found guilty, then he should have left town, but they still found him not guilty, and he was still required to pay that punishment of leaving town. So um, do you think that he violates the law there? And do you think this is a right or wrong thing to do? I see it as the reason why he was found not guilty was, was the lack of evidence. Yeah, technically it was the lack of evidence, yes. But I believe that the town base was still knew that he was found. Yeah, the, I, yeah. yeah so, they were aware of yeah. who did it, but um, so there's a lot of trials. It was just that um, you know, can you think of a modern day trial where we know that they did it, but they got off because of the lack of evidence? Was O.J. Simpson one of them? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So O.J. Simpson's one that I can think of. Casey um, Anthony. Yeah. Casey yeah. Anthony, I was going to say, that's oh, the yeah. one. And I've she's been watching that, so yeah. yeah, and she's pregnant again. Yeah. But yeah, so the same sort of thing where, you know, does the, but do we think that this violates the law? If you know in your heart of hearts and, and by circumstantial evidence that somebody's guilty, um, do you think that you should still find them guilty, even if you don't have the evidence to support it? In the time period, maybe. Yeah, okay, so in this time period, maybe. Yeah. So do you think that that's why? Um, they went ahead and ordered him to leave town, I even though so. that's not the punishment. Yeah? I think so, because they, they knew it was them. Yeah. So but all signs pointed yeah. to you. Good. Um, so how, did, how does 
this affect Abner? Someone other than Travis. Abner could see it as another opportunity to be somewhere new. Maybe okay. to like cause more trouble. So you think in a different place. Okay. So you think that that's like his life goal is to just cause trouble everywhere, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because I kind of get that impression too. Um, but the other thing that I think of is why do you think that he didn't use this as an opportunity to start over and maybe not make everybody angry? So he wants that like bad boy title, okay? Like he's the strongest man, don't mess with him type of stuff. Okay, but if he's the strongest man and don't mess with him, how is that working out for him? Not very well, Not very well right? <laughs> he keeps getting kicked out of towns, um, and so you know. I think, uh, I think by now he's held up this act so long that he can't. He feels like he doesn't act like this. Okay, like Well, I don't think that people respect him, but I can see where this like plays into that brother. idea of um, like maintaining control of the family. Is that yeah. what you mean? Okay. Um, what about uh, Sardi? How does this affect Sardi not being found guilty when Abner is not being found guilty? It's the last straw. It's the last straw, okay. Um, but he does go with the family to the, the Spain mansion, so. I think Sardi changes a lot through the story because when he was first, because I think he looks up to the dresses and respects them and all that, but he feels like obligated to lie for his father. Right, so that yeah. whole going or back to protect blood. Yeah. Yeah, at all costs. Yeah. Um, do you think that he has that responsibility to lie to protect his father? Do you think that he should? As a 10-year-old, do you think that he should be, I mean, we've kind of hit on this already, but do you think that he has that responsibility to lie to him? Or lie for him? He feels like he does. He feels like he does, right? Maybe because it's the only way he knows, right? Um, and who else did that? His big brother. So, you know, the two men in this 10-year-old boy's life do the same thing, so that's the role model, right? And, and kids will copy what they see. Um, so, back to the idea of we feel like he might feel like he has a responsibility to lie. So, do you think that, again, do you think it was hard for him not to lie for her, his father? Yeah, I think that it goes against everything he's been taught, right? Good. Um, so, what do you think of the two justices of the peace, right? There's two of them. Um, are they similar or different? The one from the first barn and then the one from um, the Despain mansion. I think they're similar. Do you think they're similar? Yeah. So what does that say about like justice in that society? Do we kind of get an idea of... That they all try to do like the same mindset. I don't know. They all kind of have the same yeah. mindset, right? Okay. And they all kind of treat criminals the same way? Uh, regardless of where they are. So maybe Abner knows what's coming because that's... Um, and then last but not least, how do you, um, how would you judge Sardi's mother? She's a strong woman. She's a strong woman, but in terms of justice. She's aware that what he's doing is like right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you don't think there's any love in the marriage? You think that she's just putting up with him? And yeah. um, at this time, in this time period, how well did women do by themselves with a family? Right, so do you think that she's... <coughs> oh, yeah, because they show up at the time period in the play. Yeah. Women are very um, restricted. Yeah, and I was going to say dependent, maybe? Yeah. Yeah? Um, do you think that she would be able to go out and set up her own household and all of that without a husband? And especially now that she has no boys in the house either. It's just her and the sisters and the aunt. Uh, she, even if she did, she had a hard time with it. That would probably be her Yeah, 
should have a really hard time. It probably wouldn't last very long. Um, so yeah, do we really judge her harshly for that? Like, do we judge her harshly for staying with him? Why? Why wouldn't she leave? She can't. She can't. She keeps telling him, "No, stop." Yeah, she keeps trying to be like the voice of reason, right? Like, um, the little people on your shoulder. Like, she's like the good guy over here, right? Good. Um, sorry, I'm writing your names. Like I said, I'm giving you credit for if you're answering questions. So, um, do you think the legal system of justice as presented in this specific story works for or against Abner? Yeah, it's kind of They're helping him basically. a little bit, right? And why are they finding him not guilty? There's, not There's no evidence, right? And so back then, it no evidence. No evidence. So you can't, you know, even though we know you did it, if there's no evidence, we can't really prove it. So, um, yeah, I think it's working for him a little bit, right? Because if he had been a notorious barn burner, which obviously in this time was a huge deal. Um, do you think they would have let him live? Do you think maybe they would have put him in jail instead of just saying, okay, leave town, I think go do it somewhere else, you know? I think them saying, saying leave town was just because of lack of evidence. So I don't think, I think they would have put him in prison had he been Jail or something, yeah. And yeah. then and then if, if it hadn't been, uh, if he had gone to jail or maybe been put to death or something like that, how would that have affected the family? So you don't think that people would have maybe felt sorry for her? Nope. No? Nope. Okay. Because she stayed with him. That's a cruel. <laughs> All right. But we just said that the reason that she stayed with him was why? Yeah, but... For the kids. For the kids, and? And she wouldn't be able to... She wouldn't have been able to do it on her own, because people, the way that society was set up back then... People were cruel. People were pretty cruel. Yeah? During that first bar, it sounded like... Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So maybe he was. It was more of a warning. Sorry, I didn't know if you heard him. But um, he said that instead of treating it like an order to leave town, maybe it was like a warning. Like people here are not going to be happy with you. You should probably get out of town um, to save yourself a little bit, right? So maybe they were being kind of nice and in that way. Good. Um, okay, so moving on, uh, since we've already touched on justice and society, uh, we're going to switch into society. Um, so we've already kind of talked about, who is that? Okay. Um, we've already kind of talked about, um, the idea that, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, the idea, the idea yeah of uh, the society that they live in, right? And so we've gotten a kind of general impression of the society. Um, and so what are some of the different, like, social things or um, economic things that we see visible um, from reading the story? Well, we can tell it's a very lowly based economic standard because it seems as if it's all low income if he, if Sardi and his family are in farmer's approach mm -hmm. instead of working in stores. And yeah, the, they are doing the farming thing, um, and also they are doing what kind of farming? You guys have had history class. When, when, somebody, when you're living on somebody's land and you have to give them a certain amount of crops to be able to stay there. Oh, crap. Oh. <clears throat> Anybody remember the name of it? No. Yeah, sharecropping, right? Um, so, so we know that they aren't able to buy their own land, right? So we know that that puts them down on the ranks. They're having to live on someone else's land. Um, and then there was one other telltale thing. Um, in the very beginning, well, we see the N-word used a lot, so we know what time period we're in, right? Yeah. Um, and so uh, the other thing that gets me is um, when we see in the very beginning they're sitting in the store, and how does Sardi look at the, like, food on the on the shelves and all of that stuff? It's stinking. 
It's speaking to his stomach. So what do we think that means? He's starving. He might be starving. Um, so we know that, you know, not only are they really struggling to make ends meet um, and having to shuffle around from place to place, possibly with this reputation following them, um, that they're also hungry. Um, and so that might, sh that shows us where they are socially. So then um, when they go into this mansion, the Despain mansion, how do you feel like Sardi feels when he walks in there? Overwhelmed, good word. What else? I think he's just like, oh, this is overwhelming. Inspired, maybe. Okay, so like maybe he dreams about what it might be like to live like that, right? Because he's never known a life like that. Um, do you think that he still considers the Despain Mansion a symbol of peace and dignity? No, he probably sees it as another step in this repentance cycle. Okay, yeah, I kind of think the same thing. He thinks it's just, oh, here's another place that we're going to get kicked out of, right? Um, and so, yeah, a, another repetitive uh, step in this cycle, which is good, yes? Um, what about towards the end of the story, by the end of the story? Oh, that's what we just... Sorry. Um, so, yeah, and that's at the end, but what about at the beginning, when he first walks into the mansion? Do you think his... his judgment has changed over the course of from when they first arrived to the end of the story? He probably had hope that it would be a better outcome. Okay, so he might have been hopeful or optimistic at first um, and like you said, saw it as some sort of um, opportunity uh, to start over but by the end of the story was like, oh, this is just another step. Good. Um, what about when he warns to Spain? How does this show a responsibility to his community? Okay, stops the vandalism cycle, right? Um, but how does this go against his responsibility to family? Yeah, he's, he does that, breaks that golden rule, right? So do you think that, um, what do you think the societal norm is for this time period? Was it family or community? Family. Think so? Because if, Yeah, so family was all you had. So, really yeah, so it might have been really hard to do that, right? But in order to have, like, a good community and everything that's right at home, like, it's, like, your family, and stuff, it's, like, your family to be, like, better than another family to have in this community. Yeah, so if, if it's a collection of all bad families, then it's going to be a bad community. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying? Yeah. But, um, I mean... There's such a mix. I mean, have you ever seen a community where there's no bad apples or where they're all good people? I mean, no, but it starts at home. So, like, if you want to make a change in the community, it starts with you. Okay, so you think that family is affects important, community. affects community, right? And so family affects community. Again, going back to this idea of should Sardia stay with the family and try to change the family? Because instead he ran away. So how is that helping the community? I think he's too young to try to change something. I think okay. he's too never too young to change something. Okay. Too young? Never too young? Anyone have a different idea? Do you think he could have changed the family? I think if there was a more supportive community, he would have tried to step up and change the okay, so his father in trouble. Knowing well, that there would be people who had his back. Yeah, okay. That's kind of what I was thinking, too, is that he knows his place in society, right? He knows that he's a sharecropper's son. Um, we can assume from the N-word that he's black. Um, and so do we think that um, he has high standing in the community at all? No. No. And so um, do you think that by him leaving, that will affect the community at all? No. no. Um, so I think that that's, Kind of the problem there is that whether he stays in or gets out, he's a 10-year-old son of a sharecropper. I don't, yeah, I think that he's doing things more internally motivated than externally motivated there. Good. Um, I just want to, we only have five minutes left, so I want to make sure that we get to the last one. Um, have we done all of them? Yeah, choices, that's right.
Yeah, that's the only one I don't have. Okay, so choices. Last but not least. Um, so, do you think that he acts in his own best interest when he leaves home? Yes. But we've already talked about how he's ten. And he's the son of a sharecropper. And we just talked about how in society he doesn't really have anything. So, do we think that it's in his best interest? I think he just needed to get away for a minute. Yeah, I still think it is. <laughs> just need to clear his head for a minute? Just, alright. Fair enough. Anyone have anything different? Kind of well, the same thing. He should have just, I think it was good for him. <coughs> it was good to get away from everything he, that was going on in his home life. Okay. Even if it was only, you know, not that he had anything. What other options did he have? Do you have any other stay? Okay. Do you think that would have been better or worse? I don't know. Maybe worse, maybe better. Okay. It just depends on. Think about after he's lied, if he went back home, would it have been better or worse? Worse. worse. Okay. Yeah. Or after, not after he's lied, but after he told the truth and didn't lie to protect his father, do you think it would have been better or worse? I think it would have been worse. Um, so I, I think in terms of community or society? Was it in his best interest? Uh, no. Because no, he's a ten-year-old sharecropper. What's he going to do in society? Right? He's got nobody. Um, but in terms of family, I think that it was in his best interest because had he gone back home after not defending his father, there probably would have been, you know, real consequences there. Um, so why do you think that Abner, just going back to choices here, why do you think that Abner chose to provoke uh, the Despain uh, guy as soon as he got to the farm? Because it was like they got there and he walked in and immediately tracked uh, poop all over the rug. So why do you think that he was like, did that as soon as he was given that new opportunity? Just to do it? Just to do it? Just to... Okay, so just acting out. So who do you think is more mature here? Abner or... Who do you think is more mature here? Abner or... It's like somebody's going to come through the room in a minute. Um, Abner or Sardi? Sardi, right? I think that he knows the consequences. He knows what's going to happen. Because he's looking at that maneuver like, oh my gosh, what is he doing? Right? Um, and so I think that Abner's got kind of a... A, a jab. Yeah, he's kind of childish, right? Um, he, he doesn't think things through, or maybe he does and just doesn't care. Um, yeah, so do you think, excuse me, do you think this was wise for himself and his family? Was he thinking of his family at that moment? No. No? Which I don't understand why he says family is everything. Thank you for making that connection. Yes, um, if he says family is everything, you protect your family, you do what's best for your family, do you think that him burning down barns and tracking manure all over the new mansion and all of these things, do you think that that's protecting his family or good for his family? No, right? I think he says family is everything just so he can like, just like apply that to himself mostly. Okay, so he's only using it in terms of himself, but he doesn't really feel like he needs to defend his own family or protect them? Okay. Yeah. Anybody feel differently, or do you kind of agree with that statement that, you know, he only applies those virtues to himself to, to justify what he's doing, right? Yeah, because he knows, like, there's no way to, like, convicts in the family. So I felt like, you know, on the chopping block, so it's just like, hey, pretty much he's just, like, protecting, like, you don't have to protect you, because you won't be up there. Okay, that's a good <laughs> point. He knows that, like, the wife won't get um, in trouble, but they are kind of being um, judged because they ha they all have to move towns, right? Yeah. And like we said, if he was on the chopping block and he got something happened to him, how would that leave his family? Yeah, I think the ironic uh, part is is that he's actually going to be selfish in the end. Yeah. And it's got to be determined that either by making them relocate or just moving him all together. Right. Like destroying part of his kind of human family. Okay. I think he. I think he just uses saying family over everything as, like, to justify all of his actions. Yeah, so he's using it as a justification. We're almost out of time. I was going to say, um, he uses it as a way to make, make sure that his family doesn't stop him. Okay, yeah, as a scare tactic yeah. almost, right? To make sure that they don't go against him. 
um, and then you maintain that control. Good. Make sure your names are on your papers. Pass them forward, please. And if you could put your books back under your desk. Thank you.